Well, it's finally here. Now we gotta tear the thing down and get it into the door. Table and the overarm support and the motor has to come off. Lighten it up so we can move it. Okay. Got the thing finally in here. Harder than it sounds. I had to get the table, the motor, the overarm support, pretty much most of the thing apart to be able to move the thing. It has to weigh at least a ton. I was looking at stuff here. Um, I am going to switch the motor out. It's a three phase, which I got a 110 motor here that's a third horse less more or less than what I had or what's on it or a third of what motor is but at least it'll get up and running for right now because I don't have 220 over to the shop right now right now at least we can get it running and get playing with I want to show you some stuff I started tearing it down and cleaning up the ways and stuff. Nuts on it are brand new. There is no wear in them at all. This one here has most of the wear that I've seen. And it has about 10 thousandths run out at most. Between 8 and 10 thousandths. This one actually had much less. This was probably about 4 or 5. If you, I don't know if you can see it, but there is the original flaking marks across here. So this thing has never really been used much. It still has the original handle, which evidently a lot of these get lost. It comes with that. It has. More stuff than I could possibly use for this thing. There's the three phase motor on it. It has a weird V belt on it that I've never encountered before. But for right now, I can't really run it in here because, as I said, I don't have 220. But I do have that motor under there that I was going to put on the lathe. I, it does have plenty of power and is reversible. So it uses the same shaft as the three phase. So I'll swap them over. I have a torque pack. This is a static phase converter is what it is. I can't remember what it was called. Um, over here is all the parts for this thing. Here's all the overarm support, all the a piece of three inch. Yeah, it's three inches across. And I'm not even sure how long it is. It's extremely heavy though, it's solid. The mill has fittings for half inch pipe threads on both ends for flood coolant. I've got draw bar, I've got all this stuff. I got stuff put away in baggies so I can find it. I think that's a one inch arbor up here. And let me move some of the stuff out of the way here. There is a bunch of cutters. There's Dormer, England. Cutters. Cleveland. It even has the old style metal clips on the corners. It looks like whoever had it stored it where a lot of woodworking was done because there's sawdust everywhere throughout this stuff. And there's no real use. These are all new.
more side cutters, slitting saws, there's 16th inch and 8th inch, slab mills, more side cutters, stagger tooth side cutter, where would this one come from? UTD. I'm not sure. That's a pretty ba massive arbor though. I don't think that one will go to this mill. And then a lot of shell mills. I have not really looked through this box yet, so. Oops. It looks like most of them are really sharp still, so. And, oh, a piece of high-speed steel. I could use that. Put that in my toolbox. Yeah, I've got all this stuff that came with it. I gotta make some end mill holders for it though. I'll just wrap this up in aluminum flashing so it doesn't mark up this and very loosely do that and then indicate the 30 tapers spindle off of it. And I'll cut some end mill holders because I need half inch end mill and I think three eighths but let me get this out as you can see there's a lot of stuff in that box not including the one that's on the arbor over there so sorry Yeah, that's good. Um, I've got all the end mills already ready for the end mill holder. I got two flute, four flute, two flutes for softer metals like aluminum, four flutes for steel, ball end mills, the stubby ones, there's extended ones. Um, and let me show you the shaper here for a second. I don't know, but here's the T nut for the shaper. Fits right in, and Oh, there's the key nut I was looking for. I'm just going to stand this up on its end here. So all my clamping hardware, all my angle plates, everything I have for the shaper just drops right into the mill here. So I can use all the same hardware and everything. And the spacing on the, uh, between the T-nuts for the outer ones is not too far away either from what's on the shaper. So. If I make a two-piece vise like I was going to, I can literally just cut, draw holes on the end here to clamp it down. And I can use it on the shaper or the mill. So pretty much everything will be able to be switched between the two machines with no extra fighting with it or anything. 
I'll end up making a, another B or bottom for the vise there and machine that up and just the table looks really rough but if you go through and look real closely there's not a single scratch on that table it has had really no use at all there's no scratches no dings no nothing it's perfect condition so yeah and the box that it's setting on is actually automatic power feed with rapid travel and everything it's a little noisy so I gotta add some grease to it for the gears other than that thing runs great uh, I'm gonna call it here I got a rag in the spindle so nothing gets in it and I can't get any chips or anything in it to that will mess it up yeah this thing's more or less brand new of a machine and the one guy was asking if this is a bottle jack no it's the feed for the table here feed it up and down we move the camera down here lock the table It has all the table locks and everything already on it. It's everything came with it. There's not the only thing I don't have is the manual that came with it is for this one and for the vertical milling head like a Bridgeport has, but you have a lot more rigidity off of this thing. This is actually a universal mill, so it can run as vertical or horizontal. But I didn't get the vertical head. Uh, I'm gonna probably shut this down. My battery's about dead and I don't have the camera case here. I'll get some pictures of this and call it quits. Uh, Thanks for watching. See ya.